Romans chapter 1, we're going to take a look uh, at, at one of the greatest uh, books of theology, certainly in the New Testament, but really in the whole Bible. It's a, it's a wonderful book of theology and has a great deal to say uh, to you and to me. And, and you're going to recognize a lot of the truths that you've been taught, and here, here it is in Scripture. So uh, beginning with chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. So Paul now, he is uh, here referring to a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul, who uh, self-proclaimed that he is an apostle. Well, that's not quite accurate. Uh, that's what Jesus Christ made him into, uh, an, an apostle. He's, he's, a little, he's different than the other apostles. Uh, he wasn't elected by, uh, like Matthias, but he was uh, appointed by God to be an apostle, but not with him. at the same time he was appointing the other apostles. It was after his death, the death of Christ, that Paul received his, his calling you know, along that Roman road and then, and then trained uh, with, uh, with, with, really, with Jesus Christ. He said he didn't, he didn't train with the other apostles. He trained out of the wilderness, out of the, out of the, out of the desert with Jesus Christ himself. So um, that's the story to be told. And there's a little of it in the, in the scriptures explaining that. But he calls himself here a servant or a slave of Jesus Christ. That's how he sees himself, a servant of Jesus Christ, a slave of Jesus Christ. He's called to be an apostle, it says, and separated under the gospel of God. So Christ uh, and the Holy Spirit called him out, and so he is an apostle. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the 12 gates in the book of Revelation, you know, each one uh, representing an apostle. We don't have any apostles today, at least not in my denomination, we don't call anybody apostles. There are some that still call, them, call themselves apostles, but we believe that uh, when the first century ended, that was it, you know, so you only had the 12. Uh, was that Paul or was that Matthias? I can't say for sure, but I will tell you this, that, that you, you don't hear any much about Matthias or anything at all, really, about Matthias after the book of Acts, the great right beginning. Uh, but Paul, he wrote a lot of the books, and the other apostles say that, the, that his books were scripture. John even named it. And so uh, that should tell us a great deal. And, and he was treated that way uh, in the first century when he, he even uh, corrected Peter on two occasions that we know of. He corrected Peter uh, when he was uh, straying a little bit. So he's separate under, the separate under the gospel of God. Now you have to ask yourself, what is the gospel? Now, I, I, uh, 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 it's the good news is what it is. It's, the, it's, it's what the... the, the the, the word of God is bringing to us a way to get to heaven, a path to heaven. The good news is that Jesus Christ is the path to heaven, and the cross is the door, and the, the blood is the way to uh, of Jesus Christ is the way to be washed from the sins and uh, and accepted. Um, no reservations into heaven. When God sees you, if you have taken advantage of the blood of Jesus Christ, when Jesus, when you get to the door, uh, God will see you. As, uh, as sinless, that you, that you have, uh, that you're wrapped in the, in the robes of Jesus Christ and washed clean. And when he had uh, promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scripture, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scripture, we see we see uh, many in, in, in the through the Old Testament and on to the New who are able to uh, speak. God speaks through his prophets. When they speak, it's God speaking right through them. So you have uh, many like that. And, uh, but the, the Holy Scripture here is very important because what prophecy do we have today? Well, you, preaching is really prophecy. But the prophecy that we have is the Word of God. A preacher without the Word of God is no preacher at all. The preacher gets up there and just talking to the people, I mean, saying good things, <laughs> you know, encouraging things. He's going to get far away uh, from, from the truth of God's Word. So that's why we call this book God's Word. Jesus Christ is the Word, and the book is the Word of God. And so today what prophecy is, is the preacher preaching the Word of God, or perhaps yourself. When you speak to someone and you're using Scripture and you're directly leading someone to know Jesus Christ, well, for that moment anyway, that's prophecy, okay? Prophecy, then, is the Word of God. This is the book, the Word of God. So that's why it says, um, uh, 
uh, separated out of the gospel of God, the word of God, and uh, which he has promised for by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So there you go. The prophecy comes from the Holy Scriptures today. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to his flesh. Now, we're talking about the, the, the uh, Baptist faith and message, and we're going to come to the, very soon we're going to come to who Jesus Christ is, you know, and we're going to, we're going to, and here we see the two parts, the, the, the two mysteries that we have here. That Jesus Christ is of the seed of me and the seed of David, right? He comes from the very uh, line of, of David the king, and who, who God had told him that he had a throne that would be forever and ever, and of course David didn't understand that. He wasn't talking about David, he was talking about his seed, okay? So that's Jesus Christ. He's, he sits on the human throne of the earth, okay? But he also is the very Son of God. Look at the next verse. You see, this is, this is what, it, what it's trying to explain to us. It says, declared to be the Son of God with power. So verse 4, he's the Son of God. So he's the Son of David, that's the flesh, and now the Son of God with power. Now this is something that is, we cannot explain in our own words. That in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was, uh, was, was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. There's flesh and there is God on the throne in heaven. Who is, so he was, he was with God, he was God in the very beginning. He is the very Spirit, he is God. You don't have um, two gods, you only have one God. So it's, it's, it, 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 it is correct to say that Jesus Christ is Jehovah God. The Holy Spirit is Jehovah God. The Father is Jehovah God. There's only one God. And so we have Jesus Christ, God the Son. Now, when you get to heaven and you look at the throne, you are going to see a human body on the throne of heaven. It's the, it's the body of Jesus Christ. Because when he rose from the dead, he rose bodily. Okay? So we have Jesus Christ. What, a, what an honor that is to us. That God would love us so much that he would become, in, a, in a, an amazing miracle, God the, 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 the Son became a human being. And, he, and so he's fully human. And he's fully God. Explain that one. It, 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 just, it just can't be explained. Okay? It is a gift from God. The angels sing praises and, and, and amazement uh, on, about Jesus Christ. He's totally unique. He's a gift to humanity. You see, without Jesus Christ, the God-man, we had no hope. There are no perfect men. They don't exist. They don't, there's, ne, there's never been a perfect man except the one man, Jesus Christ. The second Adam came to be that perfect man because he is worthy to be our sacrifice for sin. You kill me, all you get is dead cat, okay? When you kill Jesus, he died for us, for our sins. He took upon all the sins of mankind, died on the cross for us. He's the only one that could have done that. He washed the sins away. And now anybody who comes to him and turns away from their sins and receives Jesus Christ into their heart, gives their life over to him, not, not, not my will now, Lord, but your will forever, now, that person becomes a son of God as well. Okay, but not in the same sense. He's not, you'll never be the, 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 the God. You can never be God. But you will be a son, in other words, you'll be adopted in to the family of God because of the work of Jesus Christ. So it's just a beautiful thing that we have someone like him. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power. Remember when Jesus Christ gave the Great Commission? What did he say? All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He's the son of God, okay? And so he's going to sit on the throne of this earth, okay, and right now he's on the throne in heaven, and he leaves the throne according to uh, the book of Revelation, 
And he goes inside the throne and he intercedes for you and for me. There's no mediator between God and man but who? Christ Jesus. So this is Jesus. See how important he is to us? Without Jesus, man, we're, we're sunk. <laughs> you know, we, we, we have nothing. We are, we are, we are, we're, we're out and headed for hell. We're going to burn forever. But with Jesus Christ, we have all the glory. We're, we're going to, because we are adopted uh, into Christ, when you accept him as Savior and Lord, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What, that, what does that mean? It means we're going to be in heaven in the very Father's house. The, 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 the king of the universe. Okay? We're going to be there. How wonderful it is. So he's declared to be the Son of God with power. Look at the book of Hebrews. And we'll explain that to you more. We'll get that another time. By, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Now Paul is, uh, is, is glory in the fact that he is a sinner. He said that he was the worst, the worst sinner of all. He was a murderer. He, he went out and he captured the, the young Christian family, men, women, and children, and turned them over to the, to the enemies of the faith, you know, to prison, and to die and to suffer there. I, I, you know, I, I, he's the most unworthy of all, he's, he tries to tell us. And, uh, and now, but he talks about grace. That through the grace of God, God looked down upon Paul and chose him, not only to be saved, but to make him an apostle, a servant of Jesus Christ. The greatest privilege that, it is, that we have as Christians is not just to be saved, that's a very selfish thing, you know, you could make it a selfish thing and not share it with anybody else, you know, just hide it, hide it under a bushel, at least, as the song goes, right? Or you could be a servant and win others to Christ, tell other people about Jesus Christ, and, and take the, 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 the heat for, for telling them, because people don't like that sometimes, they feel judged, etc., they get, they get angry sometimes, they get upset. But we, we are to, uh, to reach out and be a servant, and, and Paul was willing to, uh, uh, even because of of the grace, he was so grateful to God for saving him out of his ignorance and, and the depth of his sin. Now remember, he was a leader among the Jews. He had all kinds of, 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 uh, of praise all the time around him. He could talk to the high priest, and the high priest would give him, you know, letters to go out with the men and, and, and you know, with the, with the posse and, and arrest Christians. I mean, he, he had tremendous ability. He probably was one of the Sanhedrin at one time, which is the ruling 70 of Israel. Paul had lots of, of, of power. Want power? He said, "I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ, and I'm willing to die. Jesus Christ died for me. I'm willing to die for Him." And he went out, and over and over again, he risked his life, and, and, and was persecuted, and uh, was stoned, <laughs> and eventually would lose his head. He, well, right now, he hasn't lost it yet, but he's going to be in prison, and he's going to lose his head uh, in Rome itself, uh, just where this letter is uh, coming from. So Paul is is, is in. Uh, is, is very grateful to God. We should really be grateful. We should, if we only realize, this morning we were talking about what's wrong with the United States. And I was trying to say, we could say the blood of Christ. Is, it's not a, it's, we need to cover the whole United States with the blood of Christ. What I'm saying is, there aren't enough Christians. The reason we have trouble, uh, and, 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 and this is what, what the Founding Fathers said, it, if, if we don't have enough Christians up in, in this nation, the country can't stand. It won't exist. It's not going to exist by power, by brute force. It exists by a willingness, a love of Christ, a, a willingness to want to be servants of Christ and, and to live according to the Bible. Then you can have a nation. And then it's going to make heaven sweeter. Okay? When we actually uh, glorify it, what is great, how great it will be there. But we need a reflection of that here in the United States. So what the problem is, is America has turned away from God and turn their the back uh, on, on Christ, and, 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 and we're not grateful for the grace that is freely given by Christ, and that's why we could lose ourselves as a nation. That's, that's what could happen. And so Paul is saying how grateful he is. Uh, the, the same book, he explains us how to have a nation. Uh, but it all comes back to what the, what the founding fathers were saying, 
is that we are grateful. That's what Paul says. He's grateful to God. So by whom we have received grace and apostleship uh, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Now he says in the same verse here that he's an apostle at the same time he gives God all the glory. He's, he's not proud of being uh, an apostle. It, it, it is a duty, a task that he is going to fulfill with his blood, with his shoe leather. Uh, he's not going to have a, a normal life anymore. He never would. He never looked back. He got out and he got on the road and got on the ships and got on the, on the chariots and, and, and he just never looked back. He just served God until he was dead. Okay? In other words, he's so grateful to God that he gives his life totally over to God. His, his apostleship was a tool that he could use for the furtherance of the gospel and the furtherance of the churches. He was founding churches wherever he went. So he was totally given. You know, they say if, if we just had one man that was totally given over to Jesus Christ, we could claim we could turn the whole world over. But Jesus, well, Paul was, was pretty close to that man. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he was turning the world upside down. Wherever he went, there was riots and problems and, and violence. But it wasn't him doing it. He was just serving God wherever he went. And so it says, and, and, and among whom i.e. also the call of Jesus Christ. Oh, no. We get that one. See, Paul has just told us that, 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 he, that he was called of Christ and he, and he has this great uh, title of, of apostle and, 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 and he, is, he has grace and, and, and what it means that, he has to, that he's given his whole life totally over to God. He's taken his cross. He's carrying his cross. You know, he's being stoned, beaten, uh, you know, facing the, the, the snakes and all, everything that's been thrown in his direction, you know, and... And, and then he goes, he says, you know, so we all say, oh, praise the Lord, but guys like Paul. And Paul says, and you, I'm going to do the same. You know, he's, he's telling us, we too are called of God. You know, that's what you're feeling in your heart. That's what you're feeling, Austin. Because God is calling you to a task. He's saying, take up your cross, Austin, and I got, I got a job for you over here, you know, and you'll go through some hardships. Not going to be all good. Uh, but, it's, but it is all good in the end. So uh, you, you think that Paul's sorry for all the pain and suffering that he did during his lifetime with Jesus Christ? No, he's, he's, he's happy, he's, he's privileged. He, he knows he's privileged. He considers it a privilege to suffer for Christ and to do his name, to his works. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom, among whom I ye also the call of Jesus Christ. That's us. To all that be in Rome, Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that was a really confusing thing for me. Called to be saints. I grew up and there were two kinds of people. There were the saints. There was hardly any of them. <laughs> but we didn't know who they were because they were all way back in the old time. time. Once in a while we'd have somebody called to be a saint. And, uh, and that, that would be somebody who really did something great, did miracles for God. They had to even prove that they did some miracles in their life. And God said that you are called to be saints. Now, we have in our church people coming forward, or people raising their hand, and people calling us, the, the various the, the prayer chain and each other, saying we want miracles. We want miracles. It, it happens daily. I've had people today come to me and say that we, we want God to move. We want miracles. Right? Because we are called to be saints. The saints are all the same people. Your sins are washed away. That's what a saint is. It's not someone that some church declares to be a saint. Paul is telling us here, we're all saints if you know Jesus Christ. If, you, if you've turned away from your sins and made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you are a saint. You have a halo over your head. <laughs> you know? I remember the first time someone told me that. I was at school and a lady, a lady one of the kids' mothers, uh, you know, she, I guess she told the principal and other, that, that myself and, and Rose, she was, a, she, had, she was an ex-nut in the church, we had halos over our heads. You know? We have halos over our heads. But she knew I was a Christian and she was, a, she was an ex-nut, you know. And so we had halos over our heads. What does that mean? Well, 
Maybe we do. You know, she she could see it. She said because she was a spiritist. You know, she could see that the halos. Well, it doesn't take a spiritist to know that each one of you have taken on the Shekinah glory in some sense, in the sense that you have Christ living in you. And there's a shine. You are to shine. You are to shine. You are to shine in your homes. You are to shine at the workplace. You are to shine in the community. You are to shine when you uh, work with young people. You are to shine when, when someone comes to you and asks you for a miracle. Let you pray. Shine. You know. I was talking to uh, to someone when I was on vacation, and he was talking about. I said, "Well, you, you, I heard you really have trouble with you. Yeah, yeah, I can have every place, you know." And I said, "I can tell just by looking at you. You're in pain right now, aren't you?" Yeah. And I just went over and prayed with him. Looked him, he looked him right in the eye. You know, I'm gonna pray, pray with you. They're really glad for that. And he said, "Yeah, said, some people you don't have this power to to heal, you know." And then I started talking about somebody that's power to heal. I said, "I don't need more power than anybody else." If you, if, if you have God in you, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior. You have the power to heal, you know? Don't we, we when we pray, God gives us, it's, it, it's, we pray to God and then God answers or he doesn't. That's the power to heal. But, I mean, it's, it's God that always does it and he's the one that makes the choice. But we ought to pray. We're supposed to pray and set up all the time for each other, right? Pray, pray, pray. And, uh, and, and so we should live lives that reflect what people believe about Christians. You know, that, that somehow... We hold ourselves to be up. Um, they, they think sometimes I think we're conceited. We're not conceited. We're just trying to live a good life, right? And then God hears our prayers, and God answers, and we see miracles all the time. I think we're sitting in a miracle. This church here is a miracle. Why, we, why did God give us such a beautiful church? Never wondered about that. Don't you think that's a miracle? I mean, we got, you know how much money we had saved up for a church? No, we, we bought it. Nothing. We had no money. Poor Larry, poor, 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 poor Larry, he was the treasurer. I called him up and said, hey, we're going to go see this house. We don't have any money. You come and look at it anyway. We don't have any money. Can I? Come on. Pass it, Gary. Come on. Come on. Just come and take a look at it. You know, we'll talk about it. You know? And God gave it to us. I, it, it's, it's amazing. You've got to go with it. Go with it because God loves us. Paul is that man. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, call to be the saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. May you have peace as you will, as you serve our Lord. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now I just want to just think about that. Wouldn't you like it if people were we're down in Shrewsbury, in the barber shop, and saying, "You ought to see the people up there that I that I that I met at Friendship Baptist Church." You know, or, or the people that um, that they come to Rainy Days. You know, you see the wonderful people. They're giving us hot dogs, and they, and they were talking to them about Jesus Christ and telling them that they that we could have eternal life. And and the music we're gonna have. You know, we're gonna have the Insel family here. I don't know how many, one or two, maybe, but I don't know how many. The picture says the whole family. Um, we may have more. For two hours, we're going to give them a concert, right? And, and what are we trying to do? We're, we're trying to tell them that we have peace of God. We have joy in Jesus Christ. And they can have it too. We don't come to them like we're better than they are. We're the same. You know, we're the same. Uh, but do they know Jesus Christ? We're trying to call people to Christ. And they can have the same joy and the same happiness and the same Shekinah uh, 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 light in them. So to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, call to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, for your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now that verse, you may think that's just another verse, but I, when I, the first time I read that in, in one of Paul's epistles, I became very, very impressed that um, people heard about that church throughout way beyond. This was, they didn't have TVs. They didn't have radios. They didn't even have phones. And the cell phones didn't exist, you know? And the TV, I mean, and the newspapers weren't all that good, you know, for getting around. And yet, <laughs> word of mouth, it was known 
that there were Christians here that uh, were making a big impression. Do you think it was a good place for Rome? Do you think Rome would be a good place? Uh, do you think that was a holy place, a place where, where uh, you could get away from sin? <laughs> Can you imagine the sin that was in Rome? The people were, the, were slaves, and, and they, had, they had people enslaved that, 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 that as a part of their slavery, they, they committed sin, sinful acts, etc. Uh, they, it was a place of, of greed, a, a place where everybody wanted power. Uh, people came there just to, 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 to get the advantages of the, of the big, large, worldwide government, and there was all kinds of sin going on. And he says, but, but in the midst of that, you are known as saints of God. How wonderful. For God is my witness, whom I serve with, with my spirit, in the gospel of the Son, that without uh, uh, without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So, what do we do for those who uh, uh, are doing the work of Christ? How do you win some of the Jesus? See this. So, so, uh, so we need prayers. We need we need to be praying for each other. Uh, we need prayers for uh, our sick. We, pray, we need prayers for those who are in our church who are witnessing to others. When, when I go in to, uh, to, to witness to somebody, say, in a hospital or in their home, I hope I'm not going in my own power. I hope I'm going with your prayers. And when you go, you should depend on me and my prayers to empower you. And so Paul, and Paul is saying, I, I, I never stop see it. without ceasing. I'm always praying uh, for others. I, I have a friend that um, they'll say, would you, would you pray for me? And then he'll, he'll say, no, remember to pray for me. And a few minutes later, he'll say, no, you remember to pray for me. He really covers prayer. It's a person who really believes in prayer. And, and, we, and Paul truly believed in prayer. Okay? So that's what he was doing. Making requests, if, if any, if by any means, now at length, I might have a, a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. He says, uh, you, you pray for me, I'll pray for you, and I'll try to come to you and, and share uh, more wisdom and more light as God gives it to me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for Paul, and we pray, we pray that you'll be with us as we look at this book, and we want to go through it in detail and see the depth of this uh, of your word, the depth of the gospel, how much it, it affects our lives daily and, and by the minute and by the hour. And not one day goes by, Lord, when you're not in our lives and with us as we go about our, uh, our various tasks. Let us always remember, Lord, that we are your saints, covered by your blood. We have grace. We need to be grateful and willing to step out wherever we're needed, wherever you, you send us. And we pray that you will give us the words and um, the, uh, the actions that we need to reach others for your kingdom. And we thank you and praise you for this.